Kenny Bayless. What I say you must obey. Hey guys, hey guys. Well, 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 well. The one-sided beatdown was in the Buddhism. It was like a Bud Crawford versus Errol Spence Buddhism. A broken jaw entered the broken Buddhism. And a disciplined fighter and game plan left the Buddhism. I am totally knackered, drained. The fiasco is over. I can't believe what happened. I predicted a Haney stoppage. I, I, I got to stop predicting. I've, I've predicted a Haney stoppage twice now. Um, and, and let me just, there's so much. I don't, I don't want to be here too long. Because we'll speak about it, I swear to you, tomorrow on the weekly wrap-up show. But listen, Ryan Garcia came out round one, guns blazing. Guns blazing and caught um, Devon with a left hook. But it wasn't even, it wasn't, he caught Devon on the end of the, of the punch. And Devon still went down. So, um, listen, De it's very instrumental that a fighter has <clears throat> great punch resistance. Um, a chin is needed. If you're, an, if you're an elite fighter, you have to have also an elite chin, an elite punch resistance. We've seen <coughs> fighters fall down, <coughs> down by the wayside, not having good chins. Um, Deontay Wilder, they say he's an elite puncher, but he doesn't have an elite chin. They say that Tyson Fury is an elite fighter. He doesn't have an elite chin. You saw them, those two get exposed. Um, <clears throat> you saw Chris Colbert doesn't have an elite chin, doesn't have a chin at all. Um, and we've seen Devon doesn't have a chin. It's questionable. I don't think Tiafima Lopez has a chin either um, because getting dropped by arguably two of the lightest punches in in his uh, division, Sandor Martin and um, George Cambosos. Now, Devon Haney <clears throat> is usually very disciplined <clears throat> but I just think uh, temperatures risk. The game plan that he had didn't di just didn't didn't matter. He did he didn't use the jab became non-existent so after that first knockdown, which I said didn't even catch him at the full um, impact. That shows you how hard Ryan hits. Ryan was massive in that in that ring. I would say if Devin Haney rehydrates to one sixty one sixty six. Ryan's definitely at the one, <clears throat> at the one seventy, <clears throat> one seventy um, end of the of, of that rehydration. He looked huge. Um, Ryan Garcia, um, in times just really didn't do. He didn't do anything that was spectacular. Like there wasn't any great fundamentals. I'm giving him his props, but I'm here to also keep it a buck. His um, flurries rattled Devon and Devon just didn't have any answers when he got flurried on. When Ryan was letting his hands go, Devon just didn't know what to kind of do. Devon's jab left the bull dizzy. Um, Devon's, I, up to this day, I can't tell you what his um, game plan was because um, if it was to fight long, it, that wasn't going to work because Ryan pretty much realised you know, oh, okay, he doesn't have any snap on his shots, I'm going to walk through. Even though, although Devin did catch Ryan with a nice left hook himself that stumbled Ryan, but at no point, Ryan was not hurt. Devin Haney's left with a broken jaw. His face looked battered. Um, Devin Haney uh, was on the canvas a number of times, I would say, I think it was six Three of those were deemed knockdowns, even though I could argue that maybe that four of the six were. Um, Harvey Dock took a point deduction from Ryan Garcia in round seven for what I thought was fair, but I need to look back. It was like the breaking. They was both initiating clinches. Uh, you know, there's a one-two clinch. There's a two-one clinch. Ryan Garcia didn't execute anything that you would say, oh my God, look at that. Um, There was a, there was a couple... Um, combos that Ryan did let off um on Devin Haney 
But I mean, nothing was fundamentally sound. He was just the bigger guy. He was just stronger than Devon. He muscled Devon all over, and manhandled him all around the ring. Constant headlocking, constant leaning, constant draining. He took the, the Tyson Fury approach was in the building. Devon's going to have a lot of problems moving forward um, with big lads um, that have power and don't give a fuck. These guys were three and three in the amateurs. And now I guess in the pros, which all that really matters, is that in one foul swoop, Ryan Garcia could have been the WBC champion of the world of 140. Well, let's just get to this. Ryan Garcia bounced Devin Haney so much times off of the canvas. I thought Devin Haney was a ping pong ball. It was, it was, it was just, it was, it, I was gobsmacked. Um, I couldn't believe what my eyes were seeing. I was like... Is this for real? This is why you got to love boxing. And this is one of the reasons why I love boxing. Because the excitement, the pure adrenaline. Um, um, I, Devin definitely won rounds. I'm not sure how many he won. The 115, uh, 109, crazy. Ryan did win by majority decision. So um, a judge had, you know, a judge did have, one judge did have it a draw. Yeah. One judge had it a draw. Um, I will have to do a rewatch of points score. I'll go and back and look at it so I know exactly how. But I did have Ryan winning, <clears throat> but I just don't know how, by how many rounds. Devin's face was busted up every time he went back to the corner. He looked deflated. I saw Ryan just looking stronger and stronger when he let his hands go. Um. Yeah, I mean, what else can we say about this fight? It was very um, reminiscent of how Errol Spence looked like in the Bud fight, how his face was red, swollen. He was on the canvas multiple times. That's exactly how um, Devin Haney was. And now the question is, is he elite? Well, we're going to have to speak about this um, on the weekly wrap-up show. And we'll do some stuff about this. But I want to congratulate Ryan Garcia <clears throat> on his win. Ryan Garcia beats, and I mean beats, the brakes off Devin the Dream Haney. He was in, he must have thought it was a nightmare. He's like, oh, this is no Devin the Nightmare Haney. That's what it was. Um, and commiserations to Devin the Dream Haney, still a consummate professional, still made weight. And Ryan Garcia says at the press conference he is leaving 140 because he can't make it. Like I said, loads of these cats that start off at lightweight, they need to, they just need to skip 140. Um, Shane Mosley was one of the people that did that. He skipped 140 in its totality and went straight to 147. You can see when you're so tight at 135, there's no point of trying to do the 140 because <clears throat> odds are you've already grown out 140 before you've actually officially landed there too. There's only a few true 140 pounders. One of them is Tiafimo Lopez. One of them is Regis Progre. Um, but I believe Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia should s just skip and go straight to 147. So Ryan Garcia does state that he is leaving the 140 pound division because his body cannot make that weight. Anyway, I'm gone. Hey girl, it's Liani Shan rep none less. Come box with Shan. Gyan. God, the upset was in the building. Gyan.